Hello, it's John Heaton, and I'm going to review Electric Arguments from Paul McCartney now. It's actually credited to the fireman, although Paul McCartney's name is on the cover in small letters, along with Youth, which is the stage name for a guy called Martin Glover, and this guy Youth used to be, and still is, I think, the bass player for a band called Killing Joke, and Paul teamed together with, with this guy to make two albums, prior to this, which were largely instrumental, and this one, which the difference being here, features vocals. And um, came out in 2008, so chronologically speaking, it's the one after Memory Almost Full, but as I say, it's not credited to Paul McCartney as such, so it's strictly not a solo album. Although there are many elements of this album, unlike the previous two, which make it more of a, an accessible album to his many fans, so he didn't the first two were a bit hard work, I think, and this one even kind of slipped under my radar at the time because um, for a few reasons, one of, one of which was the opening track is so bad. Um, really a dreadful choice for an opener. I'm not sure what he was doing with that anyway. Um, I'll go through the tracks in a minute, but the trusty uncut uh, ultimate music guide uh, sorry, enemy is it? No, uncut, yeah. Uh, gives this album a section on electronic albums. Uh, gives this album four stars and says, Here we find youth occupying a sort of Brian Eno role, presenting McCartney with a s conceptual cues, books of poetry, instrumental loops of various flavours, and capturing the results. Improv theatre, as McCartney put it. Despite a rapid genesis, 16 tracks laid down in 13 days, Results are good, both in terms of general hit rate and ground covered, with Macca adopting a Robert Plant yowl on nothing too much just out of sight, spinning a wry psychedelic folk tale on travelling light and trumping Bono with the misty Celtic anthemics of Sing the Changes, Electric Arguments feels both unpredictable and adventurous, a quite exceptional record. Uh, so that's a good review, and one of the critics says, depending on which McCartney you like the most, you may or may not like what he's done. But the best thing about Electric Arguments is that it sounds like the work of someone who doesn't give a stuff what people are going to think about time too. So, that was the review here. Um, I'll give you my view now. I, th I think it's a pretty solid effort. As I say, I was a bit underwhelmed with it at the time. I don't quite remember why. Uh, maybe I was put off by its length. It is 63 minutes long, so it's quite, you know, as in, as with many albums in the CD age, it's probably over long. But um, the opening track, I think, was the problem I had with it originally. And even the reviewer in The Guardian said, uh, it was rumored to be about Heather Mills, a kind of hate letter to Heather Mills. Um, but the, the reviewer in The Guardian said, if this was the kind of uh, stuff she had to put up with, then one can feel some sympathy for her. Because <laughs> it is the worst track on the album by quite a long way. And uh, it's just, it's not very pleasant to listen to. In fact, it's quite difficult to listen to because Paul's kind of screaming this vocal and uh, not too many redeeming features. And uh, maybe that was the reason I didn't persevere with the album. I mean, I'm, I think I did a few times, but listening to it again the other day, coming back from Lake Balaton, and I was thoroughly enjoyable. And actually, immediately comparing it to McCartney's three new tracks and uh, comparing it as a, a kind of, you know, similar example of Paul trying to be up to date and modern and coming, coming out of it here with a lot of credit, unlike two out of three of the new tracks, in my opinion. So this booklet came with it, with Paul kind of decorating the wall with, uh, with youth and uh, a few nice little drawings of, or paintings, nice colors and stuff. This album does exist on vinyl, but, and I normally don't review CDs, but if I was to wait to find the vinyl of this, we'd be here till Christmas. Well, a lot longer, actually, probably, because I've never seen it on vinyl. The cover is not very memorable. That might, might be another reason why I, I didn't rate it. I don't know. 
It's strange because I listened to it in the car the other day. I was thinking, bloody hell, this is this is great. Some of this, and uh, I go through the tracks. I mean, the first track, as I say, not not very enjoyable at all. In fact, the opposite. Two Magpies is a pretty decent kind of acoustic number with a lot of charm. A bit similar to Blackbird in feel, and seeing the changes, which I had heard a lot, because he did it in concert. Uh, it's not as good as people make out. It's okay. It's a bit repetitive, to be honest. But Travelling Light, the fourth track, is uh, marvellous. And I really like the way Paul combines the kind of falsetto vocal with the octave lower, or even two octaves lower, lower bass vocal. I think he does, it, does this to great effect on that track. And he's done it before. I remember a track called talk more talk from press to play where he'd done that very successfully um, so traveling light really good incidentally same title as a JJ Cale song I've been listening to recently as well and highway the next track another storming number and this number could have easily fitted onto memory almost full it's pretty accessible it's got great guitar and it's got it's a great hook very catchy love it and light from your lighthouse it just brilliant combination of an effortless melody from McCartney with sort of modern sounding sounds and vocal harmonies and production and it's just uh, just a gem I love it sun is shining similar in style to sing the changes but actually more successful in my opinion I think it's great and uh, it's turning out to be a bit of a lost album for me because I hadn't really given it much time of day up to now, so better late than never. And I know a few of you were asking me what I thought of it over the last couple of years, so now I'm giving you my my verdict, and it's pretty favourable. Um, Dance Till We're High is another very innovative track. I remember I remember it pretty well. Um, the album slightly loses focus around here. Lifelong Passion is quite decent. Um, is this love, lovers in a dream, kind of moody pieces. Uh, nothing wrong with them but as I say when an album is 63 minutes long after the first 40 minutes you're thinking well you know it's probably probably time to end the album but uh, the last tracks are okay and there's a hidden track at the end uh, we have to wait two minutes of silence for a little hidden track which is nothing special but there's nothing offensive on this album and there's quite a lot of adventurous material and He's pushing the boundaries, but he's also not forgetting his strengths, which is melody. And uh, he's a pretty damn good producer in, when he puts his mind to it. He produced this album with youth. Um, you know, he produced a lot of the, his solo work, particularly in the 70s. And uh, he knows how to produce a record and he knows how to, I think this, he's had many collaborations over the years. But I think this one, on, on the third outing at least, is quite a successful one with youth. Um, you know, and, and the thing I like about it is it's not trying to have a hit. <laughs> Unlike some of the, the recent tracks which just released. You know, he's not trying to get to number one here. He's just doing, just mucking around in the studio and uh, he puts it out because he's proud of it and he, rightly so. I think this album has uh, stood the test of time. It's 10 years old now. And I like it a lot and I'm really enjoying discovering it at last in detail. So thank you for watching. See you next time.